because we're software centric, our focus has been on delivering incredible performance with off the shelf components without having to do any custom work. Hello and welcome to episode 74 of Great Things with Great Tech, the podcast highlighting companies doing great things with great technology. I'm Anthony Spiteri and in this episode we're diving into the world of high performance enterprise storage solutions that are redefining the standards for availability, reliability and cyber resiliency. A company that's at true petabyte storage level. That company is Infinidat and I'm joined today by Eric Herzog, Chief Marketing Officer at Infinidat. Welcome to the show, Eric. Anthony, thank you very much for inviting us. Really appreciate you taking the time to uh, learn about Infinidat. Excellent stuff. So just before we jump into Infinidat and all things scale out storage, just a reminder, if you love great things with great tech and would like to feature in future episodes, you can click on the link on the show notes or go to gtwgt.com to register your interest. As a reminder, you can go there or all good podcasting platforms, the Apples, the Google, the Spotify, to get all past episodes, click the subscribe button because you get all the f- future episodes all hosted and distributed by Spotify Podcasts. And finally, on YouTube as well, go to at GTWGT Podcast, like, subscribe, alert, all the usual stuff. All right. With that out of the way, it's, it's been a while since I've said that, a, a little bit of time between recordings and episodes. But hey, Eric, great to have you on. Um, let's just start by talking a little bit about yourself and your background because your background is quite interesting in the, in the world of storage. Um, give us a little bit about yourself, where you, where you came from, how you got to be the CMO at Infinidat. Sure. So my background is nothing but storage. Uh, I started back in the 80s when many people listening weren't even born yet. I <laughs> uh, started as a product manager at a storage system company that was owned by MacStore, the hard drive company. Uh, I've done everything in the storage side from startups, mid-size to global enterprises, IBM twice, EMC, Seagate, and Mac Store on the hard drive side, but also I've done eight startups. Uh, I would put Infinidat kind of as a hybrid. It's not really a startup anymore, but it's also not a multi-billion dollar publicly traded company. So we're a small company in the system space, focuses on enterprise. My background in these companies has varied a lot. So for example, two years ago, I was the CMO of IBM Storage, roughly 6 billion of IBM's revenue, and also the VP of Global Channels. At EMC, I was a senior vice president of product management and product marketing uh, for the two biggest product lines at EMC at the time, the VNX, which is now the Power Store, and the VMAX, which is now the PowerMax. But in the startups, I've had a much broader role. So I've been a VP of sales in the startups four times. I run manufacturing four times in startups. I've been the VP of HR three times, and I've even been an acting CFO for a year and a half. And Wow. Company raised thirty-seven million. So the the both big company and small company, and the small company is much broader than just being a CMO. Yeah, and all that from storage and hard drives, basically. <laughs> uh, hard drives, storage software, storage systems, storage chips in one company. Um, so, but all storage centric technologies. So we're talking to the right guy, uh, I, and I think it's interesting because obviously what you've talked about there in terms of. Yeah, we're going to talk about Infinidat and what that means. But obviously, you know, IBM storage, um, VNX, is a, those, those platforms all played a critical and pivotal, sometimes painful, actually a lot of the times painful, <laughs> part of my career, right? If I think about, you know, what, we, what, what I used to put in at, in my storage platforms working at the hosting providers, um, there was IBM storage for sure. Um, but the VNXs were the ones that really um, defined a, a certain era of my career with uh, – with uh, the hosting provider doing VMware based hosting, right? And and look, they were great systems when they when they worked, but geez, when they failed, um, you really had some issues, didn't you? So, you know, I mean, there's there's, there's all uh, battle scars, right? And you, you you being in storage for so long, understand that there's battle scars that come, you know, being and living in and around these storage systems. But I think to a certain extent, what we're going to get into with Infinidat and these modern storage platforms is that a lot of the old problems have sort of disappeared to a certain extent. And we're just focusing on these things being valuable for businesses, right? Yeah, I think the key thing is, you know, when you're talking, you know, when you're beyond the storage people at a company and you're talking to the CIO, I've never met one, I've done a thousand CIO meetings, never met one that used to be a storage admin. So often <laughs> they don't appreciate the value of storage. 
If you're a global Fortune 500 company, let's see, what percentage of your corporate data is sitting on your enterprise storage? Uh, probably all of it, yeah. um, whether it be primary or you're obviously backing up every laptop and every pad of your 150,000 or 250,000 employees. So all the data in the company sits there, but often at the, once you go, go beyond the, the direct storage administrative types, they really don't understand how important storage is how valuable it can be and how, what an asset it can be, whether it be your fight against cyber attacks or whether it be way to cut co costs or to have a greener, more environmentally friendly data center. All those things can happen with storage at the center. That's correct. Yeah, hey, so just talking about Infinidat, um, it's always been a company that for me, I've, I've seen it. I mean, I've got, a, I've got a, a, an origin story actually about Infinidat where I remember going to, it, it would have been, it must have been VMware, looking at your timeline, because you guys were founded in 2011 for memory, but you've got a good DNA in terms of where you came from, right? Um, is it Moshe Yana? I've probably, I've probably completely yeah, butchered Moshe Yana and the bulk the, of that initial engineering team are the inventors of the EMC Symmetrics, which is what made EMC, you know, and carved it, the Symmetrics, then the, 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 the DMAX, then the VMAX, now the PowerMax, is yeah. what defined enterprise storage starting in the mid nineties through I'd say even today, although of course we're a strong challenger uh, to what they've been doing in the enterprise. Isn't it really interesting? Like a lot of these um, companies that I've had on the show, their genesis has come from another storage company or another storage company before that. The, the, the smart people that worked in and around certain systems at the big guys, once they got enveloped or once they got acquired or once they became big, and they started to become more of a, of a churner. You know, these guys who have got the, the entrepreneurial and engineering spirit went out and started these other companies. And it's, it's always good to hear that sort of stuff, right? So, that, so that's effectively the other origin story here in 2011. Um, I remember Infinidat at VMworld 2014. Well, I, I, back basically a too long, didn't read sort of scenario. We were going through a modern uh, refresh of our storage platform at a company I was at, and we chose poorly. Um, so we were going through some really poor storage um, decisions. Um, the pain of choosing the wrong storage platform was real. So we got sent to VMworld 2014 to basically scope the floor, scope what was at the event to try and see if there was anyone new with a modern twist because we didn't want to go down the traditional path of the VNXs and those you know, monolithic sort of storage platforms. We wanted something new and fancy. And I do remember walking past the Infinidat store back then, and it would have been, it wasn't completely on the outer, it wasn't completely in the middle. So it was on the, on the, in that middle part there, um, where you just see the, the startups that are just starting to make their name. And I remember the rack, and it was a full 42RU rack full of this Infinidat storage. And I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty impressive, right? It, it looked really good. And it always stuck out to me because I know that there was lots of people around there, and clearly Infinidat has done something right because. If you think about that time frame, there was a ton of storage vendors out there. And Infinidat seems to have been the one that has survived and, and thrived, albeit by doing it relatively quiet. You know what I mean? So is, is that a fair statement? Like you just gone about your business as a company? Yeah, I think, you know, a couple of things. First of all, when you look at a lot of our competitors, they're broad based. Mm. Okay, if you look at IBM storage and EMC, where I came from, they have a wide range of elements in the portfolio. We don't. We have three products, our Infinibox, which is a hybrid array, which was the founding of the company. The Infinibox SSA, which is an all flash variant of that. And our InfiniGuard, which is a purpose-built backup appliance. But all three of them, although using the same operating system we call the Infuse OS, are all focused on enterprise. The bulk of our customers are global Fortune 500 accounts that use us. In fact, 25% of the Fortune 50 use Infinidat, even though we're much smaller than a number of our competitors. So, but we don't have an entry storage platform. We don't have a mid-range. We are up yeah. at the high end with a very sophisticated clientele. And in fact, one of the key things that differentiates us is not just our technology, which is all software-based. We don't do any custom ASICs, no custom hardware. We That's use interesting. Yeah. components. So it's really about what we do with the software. But it's also what we do from a support and service perspective. Gartner, you know, one of the leading storage analysts, actually more than storage IT analysts in the world, not only has given us 
a leadership position in the Magic Quadrant for the last six years in a row, but they actually run what's called Peer Insights. And Peer Insights are reviews of the vendors by end users. And not just for storage, it's storage, it's databases, yeah. it's hypervisors, no idea, yeah. it's everything. And those Peer Insights are vetted by Gartner to ensure it's not me or not you writing the reviews. It's a legit end user. And then every year they do what's called the Customer's Choice Award. And that's based on your mathematical grade. For each of your products that you have, you can get a 5.0 as the highest grade. So with our three products, 4.9 out of five for our original Infinibox, 4.9 out of five for our Infinibox All Flash, and 4.8 out of five for our purpose-built backup appliance. So based on those scores for the four past times, we have been one of the Customer's Choice Award winners. But that is a result of our support, our white glove service, and what we do with professional services over and above the base technology and how it delivers both technical value and business value. But we bolster that with a very enveloping support and service model. For example, think about storage or actually anything else. You have level one, level two, and level three support, not an infinite app. We only have level three. That's So when they need a, a help, whether it's over email, a text, a phone call, however they reach us, they're reaching a level three, highly sophisticated technical support engineer, not a level one guy right out of university, yeah. which is typical, right? We don't do that. And all of our accounts have what's called a technical advisor. And technical advisors are not about support. That's a different function. Technical advisor's job is to optimize their applications, workloads, and use cases with Infinidat. So it's, it's that support and service that, if you will, white glove service and what we do with our professional services team that differentiates because we don't do custom hardware. You have no all flash modules. We don't do any storage chips. We literally use off the shelf components. In fact, we don't even do an array controller. We use servers as our array controllers. Everybody else literally takes and creates an array controller. It's not that hard to do, but still it takes yeah. engineering work. We just shove servers into the rack and they run our operating system instead of making a if you will, a array controller is really a custom server. We don't do that even. We just literally use off the shelf servers and leverage and ride that wave of technology up, whether it be the server vendor, the flash vendor, the hard drive vendor, the interface vendor, right? The ethernet guys for iSCSI or you know, uh, ethernet over NVMe, the fiber channel guys, obviously. For, and we just ride those waves. So we can focus very much on software and support and not really worry about the hardware. Yeah, I think, and I think that's pretty pertinent in the fact that early on when you started off, like you filed for a number of patents, right? Like I did some research as I do with these shows and 39 patents um, in the first couple of years, right? Before you really released and what went into Infinibox. So it shows that, you know, the, the, the people that were in the engineering team were doing some really cool new stuff. And I think that's uh, resultant in the fact that, you know, you mentioned that you, you, you're serving sort of a particular niche, well, a broad niche, but effective petabyte scale. And that's what I say with Infinidat is that I think the first box, it was like basically it averaged around five petabytes of data, you know, back then in 2013, which was huge. Like I remember thinking, you know, well, you know, if you get like 500, 400 gigs, that's quite a bit. But you guys are talking about multiple petabytes even back then. So that's quite that was quite an initial differentiator. And that, I think speaks to um, the path that you guys were taking even back then and understanding where you wanted to play in the market. You weren't interested in those smaller type of scenarios. You wanted to go for the big ones. And I think that served yourselves really well um, because you were talking earlier, but what's your kind of average petabyte um, customer today? Yeah, so our average petabytes at a customer is just under 14 petabytes today. Yeah. And we have tens of customers that have over 100 petabytes of Infinidat right now in, in use. So it, it really varies. It's huge. Again, that's huge. That's huge. That's like, that's scale. The, yep. Average is, is just around 14 petabytes for our average customer. And I think as well, what I understand is that's just not your standard sort of use. Because if you talk to a traditional high volume storage companies that do these sorts of things, Usually they're talking about, you know, video surveillance or some sort of high, high, high volume storage scenario, which is effectively cheap and deep. 
But from your point of view, what I understand is there's a lot of um, tier one workloads that are running in primary storage systems, you know, your, your VMware environments, your high transactional database environments. That's sort of what you guys are actually, that's your bread and butter, right? At scale. Absolutely. Ab absolutely. So when you look at our customer base, it's heavily concentrated in the financial services sector, healthcare. Um, we do very, very well with the telcos as well as the service yep. provider market, whether that be a cloud provider, a uh, hosting provider, or an MSP. We do exceedingly. In fact, uh, there's a show that's focused on Flash. It's called the Flash Memory Summit. It's a global show, but it's hosted here in California. People come from all over the world. It's all about Flash. And it's anything Flash, including chips and raw NAND yep. and everything up to systems. So the last two years in a row, we have our customers actually have won the award as best all flash array for hyperscaler deployments. That's basically cloud service provider type uh, deployment. So that's a strong niche for us. Again, financial services, healthcare, government. So we're we're broad. We have manufacturing company. We have a, a in fact a company and who's a storage company, but more on the OEM side. They've got 18 petabytes and they run all their factories on Infin in Infinita. And by the way, the products they make are not just sold to Infinita. They're sold to every one of our competitors. So we wow, help our competitors by providing <laughs> a storage platform that one of our customers use to make storage products for everybody who competes against us. Yeah. Hey, it sounds like back if I'm thinking about Anthony, if I could go back in time and give Anthony some um, advice back in 2014, it would be stop at that stand at VMworld, ask some questions. And maybe the next couple of years would have been a bit easier for us <laughs> at the company, right? <laughs> Getting your storage. And it sounds like, because I do, I have heard at specific cloud providers, because obviously that's my world, right? And I know that a lot of them do actually leverage Infinidat um, on various levels. And I heard, I hear nothing but good things about them. So uh, I think that's, that's testament to even back then, you know, understanding that you were kind of ahead of the game and it's just, you know, 10 years later now, it's basically been solidified almost. Um, and I, I think the portfolio, you know, usually what happens, and to your point earlier, the uh, company like yourself, the portfolio expands quite significantly because you kind of get a bit bit greedy, so to speak, right? And you want to get more money and more revenue and you want to tap into different markets. But it sounds like Infinidat's basically stayed true to its initial, um, you know, path, which was to basically, you know, perform and scale at petabyte level. Um, talk a little bit Absolutely. about, yeah, talk a little bit about um, the core the core differences that makes Infinidat special, whether that be cultural, whether it be from a technology point of view. But sure, so, sure. you've been there for two, you've been there for two years, but obviously you, you've you've felt and you've grown into this company as well. I can see that. So I'd say a couple of things from a cultural perspective. It's about teamwork, not only within Infinidat, but whether it be our end users, the channel partners that sell to those end users in incorporating them into a team oriented approach, which is why we have, for example, every account has a technical advisor and the technical advisors make sure if the account is sold to by a reseller, that the reseller knows, hey, here's what we talked about at XYZ, Global Fortune 500, blah, blah, blah. Here's what we're doing to optimize their SAP workload or their Mongo workload. So that team spirit, which is not just an internal thing within Infinidat, but a thing that extends beyond our own walls into the walls of the customers and the walls of our channel. So that's a cultural thing. I'd see, think the second thing is really about our software technology. We are a software company that's storage centric. Uh, Love we that. deliver on three platforms, as I mentioned, the InfiniBox, the InfiniBox SSA All Flash, and the, and the InfiniGuard. But those platforms are all built around our Infuse OS operating system, which incorporates comprehensive enterprise class data services, machine learning technology, integration into AI ops worlds, both inside where we use AI ops inside for support and service. We have several public references that talk about, A, they haven't touched their InfiniBox for years because it just runs and runs on its own. And others who've talked about where there was a bad power supply or fan, something simple, we're the ones who told them because yeah. Since it runs on its own, it's so autonomously automated that you don't really need to manage it. In fact, we have a customer in North America in the financial services sector, 66 petabytes, one admin, one. We have another Mental. customer in Europe, 100 petabytes, 
and they've got four admins. Now, as you know, from the analyst community, when you look at the storage analyst who estimate this thing, the normal storage admin can do usually no more than two petabytes, maybe three. And so we've got customers running, you know, over 60 petabytes with one person. So that autonomous automation is built though around our software design. So our neural cache technology, which uses DRAM, there's over 20 patents you mentioned, of course, Anthony, all the patents we filed for over a hundred and I think it's over 130 right now. We've got just yeah. under hundred, it's either 98 or 99 granted already. Um, and that's all about software and design. It's not about any custom hardware. So it's really about that software technology. And then the third thing is we make sure that we don't just deliver technical value, but we deliver business value. So as an example, uh, we have a third party report, not by us, which interviewed a number of our end users, okay, enterprise end users. So some key takeaways from that. First of all, the average return on buying Infinidat is 11 months. When you're in a troubled okay. economy and you're in the storage team or you're the CIO, when you go talk to the CFO for money and say, I can get a return on this thing in under a year, the CFO perks up. When the economy is booming, he'll say, oh, two years, no ca don't care. But when the economy is rough like it is now everywhere in the world, it under a year <laughs> is, you know, magic to the ears of it's the out of interest i mean that is great and, and but how does that get quantified like i'm always interested in that how do you quantify the sure. return on a storage yeah so it's all about how much money they save so for example we just announced a new public reference out of japan zing the karaoke company very good we cut Typical. their costs what i was gonna yeah. say very very japanese to be karaoke but yeah, yeah. yes <laughs> So they, in the public case study, they talked about how we save them 80% per year on their costs, both capital and operational expenditures, okay? We do other things. So for example, at Zing, we consolidated 27 different storage arrays from four vendors into two Infinite boxes. Okay. 27 to two. So think about the capability you get when you only have two from a manpower resource, not to mention the savings on power, cooling, rack space, floor space. By the way, one of the things we've come to uh, coin is what we call E squared. Okay. And that means economy equals environment. The more money you can save, the better environmental results you'll get. So your ESG is much better you reduce the carbon emissions that are attributed to the storage. We have a customer here in the States that is in the financial services sector, global 50 in the world. They had 450 floor tiles of an all flash array from two competitors, 450 floor tiles. Yeah. They now run that exact same company on 50 floor tiles of Infinidat. So talk about yeah, yeah. economic yeah, yeah. savings. Yeah. That is huge. Um, and that that's what we do. So that capability of leveraging our technology to deliver true business value. Okay. And back for example, we and we also guarantee things. So we guarantee our recovery time uh, in the cyber world. So we did a demo live where we covered a 20 petabyte not megabyte, not gigabyte, not terabyte, 20 petabyte Veeam backup repository in 11 minutes and 55 seconds. And that could have been v not just Veeam, it could have been Palm Vault, IBM Protect, Veritas, any of the number of backup providers in the world. We work yeah. with all of them. The point is we can recover that backup data set at 20 petabytes, doesn't matter who, who your end user chooses to use, but in this case, it was a demo with Veeam, 20 petabytes of 11 minutes and 55 seconds. Pretty crazy. That's unheard of for that capacity. Yeah. And that, 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 and that all contributes to, to, to that TCO and that return on investment for sure. I, exactly. I completely get it. It's good, good uh, explanation there. In terms of platforms and supportability, I mean, we, we mentioned VMware, bread and butter. I, I'm pretty sure there. Um, you know, high transactional databases. But in terms of what, the protocols that you're offered is very quickly go through the protocols. I think it's obviously important to understand what protocols 
um, in terms of storage you guys can actually expose to your customers? Because it's not, it's not the usual, is it? Yeah, well, so what we do is on the Ethernet side, we do iSCSI. We, of course, do NFS. We, of course, do SMB. And we also do NVMe, uh, Ether, NVMe over Ethernet. But we also support, from a protocol perspective, on the block side, of course, Ethernet with iSCSI, but of course the fiber channel protocols and we can do fiber channel over NVMe as well. So lots of different ways to talk to an Infinidat storage solution. Mm -hmm. uh, you pick the protocol that you want to use. We don't support native S3 protocol for object, but we do work with a couple partners, AKA S3 software vendors. And we have number of accounts that use us with S3, but it's in partnership with one of these other software Understand. vendors out there in the industry. Yeah. yeah. And that in itself is pretty good, right? Because I think uh, the easy, the easy, well, the, the easier thing to do is for someone to say top down, we're going to have to support object storage moving forward. But, you know, for you guys to stay focused on what you're good at and kind of work with partners is, is the way to go. And then you also have a, a container storage integration as well. So you can natively yes. plug into Kubernetes yep. and whatnot. So we have CSI integration. Um, so for primary storage, we're also certified by Kasten for Veeam. Very good. Uh, we work with Red Hat. We work with VMware Tanzu. Um, if someone wants to, what I'd say in the States, what we call roll your own with Kubernetes and just do it themselves, we support mm -hmm. that too. So in fact, we just came off uh, the KubeCon show in North America, which was a couple weeks ago. You guys were there? We were there. In fact, we presented in the Red Hat booth. We also presented in the Kasten by Veeam booth. So the backup side and the primary storage side those Amazing. two partners of ours asked us to present. So we presented on A, what Infinidat does in the Red Hat world with containers, and B, with Kasten by Veeam, what we do in the backup world for container backup. So whether it's primary or secondary, so the container side as well, obviously in the hypervisor side, it's heavily VMware. We have tight VMware integration. Um, we're known for that. We support more VVols than anybody else. Not that a lot of people use VVols. <laughs> We there's work a, with Hyper-V. There's a word. Yeah, we work awesome. with o OVM. We have accounts you know, that are Oracle-centric that even though Oracle supports VMware, there are still some accounts out there that have you know, the Oracle Virtualization Manager, which is almost extinct. We work with that. Uh, there's some people that still have KVM. Not that that really did well, but you know that whole, um, if you will, open source virtual machine yeah, uh, we've got KVM, we've got OVM. Obviously, the bulk of it is VMware um, and Hyper-V. But probably ninety percent of our customers have VMware environments that, and they don't always use. Some still uses bare metal. In fact, we have because we're so strong, what I'll call the the global Fortune five hundred. We have many of them that have some of our storage with containers, some of our storage with VMware, some yeah. of our storage with Hyper-V, some of our storage, you know. In all kind, in fact, we even support hybrid cloud. We have the capability with our Infuse OS Cloud Edition, where you can seamlessly integrate. And in fact, right now on Azure, when you run that in in uh, sorry in Amazon, in that Amazon configuration, it behaves as if it is an Infinidat Infinibox on prem, and everything you can do in that Amazon environment is exactly what you can do on prem, whether it be cyber storage resilience whether it be replicating, whether it be snapshotting, whether it be our neural cache technology, which gives us that incredibly low latency, as low as 35 microseconds, that exact same software exists as a cloud instantiation in Amazon today. And we'll be supporting next year, announcing another cloud provider support awesome. as well. So I was going to ask that actually. Cloud. Yeah. I was yeah. going to ask, you know, how does it extend up into the cloud, into, this, into the modern way that a lot of thing, pay, customers looking to consume storage? Because obviously, you know, we know that it's a hybrid world at the moment. So, and exactly. object storage and cloud-based storage represents good levels of uh, economy and scales of economy for customers. So, it's good that you guys are, are, are out there. But to the, your point earlier, you can do it because you're software, right? That, that's right. that's why you can do that because you are software-driven. You're not tied to hardware, which is the, the best place to be, obviously. Um, hey, just talk a little bit about, um, you, in our pre-chat, we talked about storage doesn't have to be expensive. We've talked about a lot of the different things around, you know, the fact that you guys are you know, software, you're at petabyte scale, you've got great customer service. Typically in the storage world, you've got that triangle, um, you know, performance, scalability, and resiliency or whatever it might be. 
Um, you can only have two of the three, but you in Infinidat seem to have three out of the three. So how have you achieved that? And just talk a little bit about why, you know, storage doesn't have to be expensive at scale. Sure. Well, the first thing we do, we've done is because we're software centric, our focus has been on delivering incredible performance with off the shelf components without having to do any custom work, which by the way, gives you a better ROI and a better TCO as we talked about just a little while ago. We made sure that that performance comes out of our software. So we have a technology as part of our Infuse OS known as NeuroCache. NeuroCache allows us to use a DRAM cache in a very sophisticated way. In fact, we have several you know, videos which actually were live. I'm crazy, I'm almost 70. So when we do our demos, we don't record anything ahead of time. We literally awesome. do them live. Best way to do it, best them. way to do it. We redo them, we, you know, we, we record them when we're doing them live, but if we mess up, it's right there and we do it in front of hundreds to a thousand people are watching if we mess up. So far, we have not messed up. It's the best way to live. You feel, you, feel, you, feel, you feel alive. It's good. I reckon it's good for your health yes. to do live demos. Yep. So we have demoed multiple times, 35 mics of latency. Um, the enterprise strategy group, uh, we gave them access to several Fortune 500 customers' boxes, not our boxes, the boxes literally in the field. And while we talk about 35 microseconds of latency is what we say publicly, they documented with the accounts that they looked at as low as 35 mics of latency. So that allows us to get that performance angle. And we guarantee that, by the way. <laughs> so we yeah. guarantee performance on both our InfiniBox and our InfiniBox off-flash. Obviously, the guarantees are different because the off-flash can be faster than a hybrid Absolutely. array. Absolutely but it's built by that neural cache technology. And in fact, for us, it's almost unusual to not have DRAM cache hits in the 95% plus with our accounts, which is why we can have such high performance. Even on the hybrid array, our hybrid array outperforms probably 75% of the all flash arrays in the market. And our all flash absolutely outperforms everybody as this third party um, study shows. So that gives us the performance, which we guarantee in writing. We also guarantee availability, 100% availability at scale. So it doesn't matter. So for example, um, we will give you 100% availability guaranteed. Uh, our largest InfiniBox hybrid is up to 18 petabytes in 42 rack U. We'll guarantee that as 100% availability. So wow. we, we put our money where our mouth is. And then because of the what we can do with all our performance metrics, we are allowed to consolidate a number of different arrays. So we have a customer in the States, they're in the retail market. They consolidated 24 arrays from three different vendors into two InfiniBoxes. We already talked about the customer in the financial sector, 450 floor tiles to 50. Yep. That's an incredible amount of consolidation. That consolidation yields the financial benefit of ROI, TCO, uh, frees up manpower utilization, and it allows them to not spend money on storage. Instead of spending money on storage, they can spend money on their AI project or some other project that they're working on that yeah, they need yeah. the money for. So storage doesn't have to be as expensive, and particularly with our capability of consolidating a number of other arrays, 450 floor tiles to 50, that's incredible. 24 storage arrays to two. And again, in our public case, it just came out last week with Zing, they had 27 and they've gone to two. Even our awesome. purpose-built back of appliance, we have a cloud provider um, in South Africa. They had 14 purpose-built back of appliances from someone else. Now they have two. Good and stuff. they run Beam, Veritas, and Commvault back up as a service at that cloud provider with two in, in um, InfiniGuards versus 14 that they had from someone else. So that's that the financial benefit you mentioned, Anthony. Yeah. That's brilliant. And uh, that's a great segue because I wanted to finish off on that cyber resiliency piece, right? Which is obviously close to, to me and close to the, to the market this year, really. Cyber resiliency right. and cyber security is top of mind. So how has Infinidat, you know, come to the party there to work with various backup vendors? You've got, you've got a purpose-built backup appliance that you give out to your, right. to your, to your customers. So where is, it, where is Infinidat elevating the capability there? So whether it be 
primary storage or whether it be secondary storage within Finnegard. It's all built around our Infinis, in, InfiniSafe cyber storage resiliency software. And that includes five elements. One, immutable snapshots, which by the way, we guarantee in writing. Logical air gap rings separating the management plane from the data plane. The capability of creating a fence forensic environment. If I do have an incident, you sure as heck don't want to recover a copy that's got malware or ransomware in it. So you need to get to a known good copy. You want to create a fenced environment and do the testing there. Uh, we also provide what we call InfiniSafe cyber detection. This will help you identify malware or ransomware with anomalous pattern detection and ML okay. technology. And that can be used for A, an early warning system, and B, it also can be used to help you find that known good copy. And the last thing, of course, is the RTO that we guarantee. In the case of the purpose-built backup appliance, we already talked about that capability of recovering that 20 petabyte Veeam backup repository. We guarantee, regardless of data set size, under 20 minutes. And by the way, our largest in, in, in Finnegard is 85 petabytes in a single rack. So we did that Veeam with 20 petabytes, but it could have been larger, but we guarantee- That's some density. That's some great yes. density there. Um, you know, you talked about, again, the fact that, you know, pattern matching, um, all the immutability, all the good stuff that that even Veeam talks about or any, any security, um, sorry, not a security backup vendor. We're not a security company, we're a backup company. Um, how, how is it different, differentiated? Obviously, I, I guess the advantage that Infinidat have in, in, in a couple of minutes, just to explain, you're, you own the storage, you own the data. So you understand what's on that actual storage platform right. in the disks and you're tied directly in there. Is that the biggest advantage? The fact that you own the data and you can actually just be quicker to it to understand what's going on within it? Well, with a cyber detection that helps us analyze, you determine what you want to analyze. You want to analyze file systems, files, snapshots. Do you want to do databases? So that's used to evaluate. The immutable snapshots, obviously immutability started really that's as it. a compliance and regulatory, but now clearly has a use in cyber resiliency, clearly. And then you want yeah. to separate that management and data plane right? Which we do, which not everybody does. Um, the RTO times, no one can touch us. We, you know, only one other vendor will do an RTO guarantee on primary storage, only one. And they announced it 18 months after we we started doing ours. So, you know, all and it's all that coming together. And InfiniSafe, the base elements of InfiniSafe are free. We charge for the cyber detection capability, but all the other elements, the SNAPs, the RTO, the fence forensic environment, and the uh, air gapping, that's all free. So you yeah. don't have to use it, but when you get the InfiniBox SSA, the InfiniBox hybrid, or the InfiniGuard, that software comes for no charge. You don't have to pay a dime for that. You have to pay a, a lira for it. Well, there is no lira anymore. No, you don't have to pay a euro for that. You don't have to pay any renminbi, no yen. It's built into our InfusOS operating system. So that's a differentiator that. in and of itself right there. I love that. And I think the biggest difference that I say before I just wrap it up is that in the old days, initial days, you talk about sync, um, you know, replication between arrays to basically get your resiliency. But now to me, it seems like the software, the smarts, all, all the tech is going into making sure it's resilient on the primary. So you don't have to double <laughs> your storage, right? You don't have to double the amount that you're getting, the racks and everything. I think, I think that in itself is a shift you know, from where we were fundamentally 10 years ago, where it was all about, you want to make something resilient, you're going to double up. Well, now you're using the power of software and the smarts and the engineering to be able to do that. So, hey, great, great stuff. I, I love that. We could have talked for a lot longer about all things Infinidat. Um, I really love Infinidat, what they've done, what you guys have come from, you know, from that first time I saw you on the stand, you know, 10 years ago at VMworld to where you've become today. I'm, I'm really impressed with the company. You're doing some great things. You've got strong partners, strong resellers, and you're doing some, some great stuff. And I think that's resultant also in your performance as well. So, hey, Eric, thanks for being on the show. This is a final reminder. If you love great things with great tech, we'd like to feature in future episodes, please click on the link on the show notes. Head to gtwgt.com to get all of the information there. A big thank you to Eric and Infinidat. And we'll see you next time on Great Things with Great Tech.